everyone, today I'm building the guinea pigs some new cages and these cages are going to be similar to a lot of cages you see in other YouTubers videos. Um, I'm just going to be building um, the Corex or Coroplast base to the CNC cage. I won't be using the grids um, just because I don't have enough grids and also I'm getting a bit sick of using the grids um, because we're Snoopy and Ollie's cage all the poo um, kind of just rolls out through the grids so I'm just going to be making the base a bit higher and just using that as a cage but if you'd like to do this but use the cubes as well then you can just follow what I do but um, make smaller sides basically and then just put grids around it and attach them together so this is the Corex I've bought and it's not focusing Ooh. and I did try and get it from a local sign shop and I had it all ready I'd inquired in loads of different places and I'd got a quote and I was going to um, ask them to deliver it um, and then when I rang up to confirm it um, they quoted me a higher price and they also said it would be £20 to deliver which is ridiculous because I live literally just down the road um, but yeah they wouldn't deliver it unless I paid them £20 so I ended up buying it online um, from eBay and I'll put a link in the description bar for where I bought the Coroplast and I'll also leave a link for where I bought the grids that I was using for Snoopy and Ollie's cage so if you want to make a traditional CNC cage then um, you've got both of the links there so these are 8 foot by 4 foot sheets of Coroplast and this is the 4mm thickness which isn't ideal, I'd like it to be a bit thicker but they only had 2 or 4mm so and because the price was pretty good I thought I'd just go for that. So the Coroplast I bought it was either one sheet for 14 99 or three sheets for $34.95 and because I needed two um, I didn't have to pay much extra to get three so I thought I may as well get three and then I can always build kitchen areas or things like that if I want to in the future because it worked out um, not much more at all to get an extra sheet so I thought I'd just pay a little bit extra and get three sheets and um, like I said before it comes in two or four mil and it also comes in white or black but I thought white would look pretty good in this room and it also came really really quickly I ordered it two days ago and it's here so that's pretty good so I'm just going to show you what I've, I'm going to do I've drawn it really helps me um, to kind of draw how I want things in the guinea pig room and that really helps me um, personally so you might want to do this it might help you so what I did is measured the room and drew a to scale um, drawing so if it's 12 foot long I did 12 centimetres um, so everything's kind of to scale so then I can see how everything's going to fit in the room and then what I just did is I drew a diagram of how I'm going to cut it where I'm going to cut and where I'm going to score and I also made some little um, kind of prototypes um, because I want two cages I made two of these just to kind of work out how it's going to go together this is really hard to do with one hand and so I made two of them and then I can kind of play around with them in the room drawing so I can see how everything's going to fit or if it's going to fit in or what's going to happen so I'd really recommend doing that um, I find that really really useful because then I can kind of imagine easier where it's going to go so I did a couple of drawings and that's how I want it to look like eventually and um, yeah so that's that's Ollie <laughs> so yeah um, I find that really really helps me so what I'm going to do I've decided that I want the sides um, to be a foot high because I don't want them to be able to chew the top because all my boys are right chewers and it's a pain in the bum and I don't want to spend lots of money on um, Coroplast because it's cheaper than um, shop bought cages um, especially for the space that you get but it is still quite a lot of money to spend if they're just going to chew it up so I want the sides to be a foot high 
and I've lost my tape measure. So yeah, I'm going to measure in a foot from each side and draw, draw like this basically. I'm going to draw this box on the inside so I can see where to cut and where to score. And um, I'm just going to be using a pencil because then I can rub it off quite easily. Um, so yeah, I'll show you when I've done that. I've laid out my choroplast here. And um, this is the guinea pig room, although you wouldn't recognise it because I've had to dismantle all the cages um, to build these um, because there isn't enough room in the room to have them and to try and build their new cages. And I wanted them to build I wanted to build them up here so I didn't have to drag them up the stairs. So the guinea pigs are downstairs at the moment, which isn't ideal, but so yeah, I'm just gonna measure that and draw the box. I'm also gonna be using um, some clear tape and this is just for when I fold the sides up and around I want to um, stick them so they don't fall apart and this is just cheap tape um, it probably would be worth investing in some good tape but I just had this lying around so I'm going to use this I'm also going to be using a pencil to mark it and a craft knife to score it with so now I've just made these tiny little pencil marks all the way around so I know um, where to score and I know I'm going in kind of the right direction and this is why I find it really really useful to have a diagram so if I'm not too sure I can keep looking back on that so I definitely recommend making like a mini model first before you do your final thing so you are familiar with how it's going to fold up and, and just so you don't make any mistakes um, because it's better to make a mistake on a bit of paper than um, pay money for one of these and um, mess it up so I'll show you that okay so this is what it looks like when it's been scored um, scoring is only if you can see the different layers scoring is only going halfway through it's not cutting the whole way through it's just going through the first layer um, so you want to be really, really careful that you don't go through too far. And once you've just gone through one layer, it, you'll be able to fold it up. And then you can kind of tape along to seal it up. So that's the plan. <laughs> and um, I'll let you know how it goes once I've done all of it. So I've just scored down the length of the piece of coroplast. So hopefully it should kind of pop up um, but I'll show you that in a second and going down this way is really really easy because you just follow the lines and I have gone a little bit wiggly in places but I've stayed within the this line so I'm sure it'll be fine um, doing that side is going to be trickier so I think I'll draw a line with a ruler where I'm going to cut and cut along it Whereas this side I only needed little markers just to make sure I was going in the right direction. I might um, draw along that side and then score that because it's not going to be as easy that way. So now I've folded this bit up you can see a little bit better what it's going to look like. So now I just need to do the same on the other three sides. Okay so now I've scored all the way round. And um, you can see here, this is the side without the lines to help, and it did go pretty wonky in places, but I'm sure once it's all put together and I've taped it up, it should look alright. Um, so in here, this is the corner where the two lines meet, and what I'm going to do is chop down, this is where it helps to have a diagram so you can make sure you're cutting it the right way but I'm going to fold it I'm going to um, cut it right the way through down here and then the sides will fold around the end rather than the ends folding around the side if that makes sense so because I'm having my cages so when I walk in the room I see the side of it I want the bits folded over to be on the ends so I don't see that if that makes sense. Um, <laughs> I'll show you the picture. Okay so when I fold it up I want 
No, I don't want it like that, do I? No, I want it the other way round um, to this drawing. <laughs> um, <laughs> which doesn't really make sense. But I want these sides to flap around the end rather than like this. So I want these flat bits on the end so I don't see it when I walk in. So now I've just flipped it over. So this is the side that I didn't score. This is the back of what I was doing before. And then the side should just fold up like that. And then you can kind of fold it up into a box. So now what I'm doing is just folding up this flap here. And then folding these two end flaps around it like they're hugging it. And I chose to do it this way so there's nothing that the pigs can chew. Because if this was on the inside they'd love to chew on that. So this is what it looks like at the moment. I've just put binder clips on the end down there just to hold it so I can show you what I'm on about. And then what I'm going to do is, there's a bit of um, overlap here. So I'm going to cut some of that off because I don't. Um, want three layers of Corex really um, so I'm just going to cut off down here some of the excess but I'm going to leave a flap um, around this so it stays together and then I'm just going to tape it really well I might put some I probably don't need some extra tape in here actually because I haven't gone through um, the Corex at any point and that's why you need to be really careful to only cut halfway through and not the whole way through because if you cut the whole way through it won't be watertight but I might just put some tape in these kind of corners and I'll probably tape up the hole underneath just to make it more secure so here's one of the cages finished and it's definitely not perfect but it's turned out alright and it's going to provide them with quite a lot of space um, I think I would have preferred to go for a thicker coroplast but that wasn't an option from the people I ordered it from so if you're going to build one, I'd recommend going for 6 or 8 millimetres. I think 4 is quite flimsy um, when you put the cage together. And this side is bowing out quite a bit. I'm not too sure why that is. Um, so I'll just put that side against the wall. But that's also why I wanted the sides really high. Um, I don't really want them... I love it when they put their feet up on the sides, but it is quite wobbly, so... I don't really want them doing it too much because I'm pretty sure that will weaken the cage. So it's not very well taped at all um, and it does look quite scruffy around these edges but that's why I wanted the flaps to fold around the edges. So from the front all you can see is one long panel. So that's one finished cage and now I just need to do the rest. Okay, so what I'm doing now is just attaching some CNC grids to the side of the Coroplast cage and that is to attach the hay racks to and also because my bottles are designed to go on the inside of the cage like that, they've got a flat back. Um, if you've got any other type of water bottle you could just kind of make a hole for the um, spout to come through and attach it to the back but these bottles are designed to go on the inside so um, I need something to attach them to and I find that really difficult with these so I'm just attaching some of these to the side and I thought I'd show you how I do that really quickly so all I've got is these um, these are storage cube grids and I'll leave a link to where I got those in the description bar and then I'm just using some cable ties um, these are quite small ones and I'm using a drill with quite a small drill bit on the end but you could use anything just to poke a hole through the coroplast but I personally find it easier to use a drill so I've just pulled the cage out away from the wall because I don't want to go through this and into the wall and I'm going to use three cable ties for each grid I'm going to do one up here, one there and one in the middle just to hold it securely and at first I'm going to hold it where I want it and mark where I'm going to drill the holes um, because I'm going to need to drill the holes just under one of these bits um, so it holds it up and doesn't kind of slide up and down. 
and I'll just show you how I do that. And I want it up a little way off of the floor of the cage because I want to be able to change the fleeces easily without the grids being in the way. So I'm going to do it a little bit off the ground and then mark it. And now I'm just going to take my cable ties and I'm going to put them through the back because I want the jagged edge to be on the back of the cage so all you'll get is a loop around here and all the messy stuff will be at the back. Now this is attached securely and I've done this on the strongest side as well so it won't wobble too much and it'll be supported the most. And all the messy bits are on the back and then if you'd like you can just get some scissors and cut off these extra bits. So now I've attached this one for the water bottles and I'll attach another one for hay. And I'll probably do that on this side because the hay one doesn't need to be as secure. Um, the water bottles are quite heavy so it does need to be quite stable and also as they drink they kind of knock it about. But the hay one wouldn't have to be quite as secure. So now I've attached these and I'm really sorry about the lighting. It's getting dark so there's kind of my shadow everywhere. <laughs> and um, because this hay rack's got these holes um, I can just cable tie that to there. But I'm thinking I'm going to have to find something to go behind here, otherwise hay is just going to fall down the back. So I don't have any spare chloroplasts, so I'm going to see what I can find to use. And then I can just um, cut whatever I use to this size and cable tie that on too. So um, I'm using a lot of cable ties. Cable ties are always handy. <laughs> but this one's going to be Snoopy and Ollie's. And... Um, I also had a quick go at making these because I'm thinking I'm going to make cage liners at some point and the reason I haven't done yet is because all the cages were different sizes um, so it would be a real pain um, but once I've worked out one that works then I can just use the measurements for all the cages so um, that's why I'm thinking of making cage liners and also Gizmo and Jafar are really bad fleece burrowers and um, these fleeces won't do one whole cage so I know for a fact Gizmo and Jafar are just going to go straight under here and um, chew the blankets and stuff underneath. So that's a real pain. So I'm trying to work out how to make some cage liners um, just so they'll be a little bit heavier which will mean Gizmo and Jafar won't be able to get under them so easily and also they'll be really really easy to change. I can just um, pick it up, put it in the wash, put another one in because it is a bit of a pain getting the fleeces to fit. But that's the plan. So I just, um, these were my first attempts so they're not all that great, but I might also make some little lap pads to go under their hidey houses just so I can change them every couple of days and then the fleece will last a bit longer. So um, these were my first attempts so they're a little bit wonky but the guinea pigs don't mind, this one's got a little heart and that one's got a diamond. So they shouldn't mind and that should be fine with them. So I'm going to try that out, probably with Snoopy and Ollie because Gizmo and Jafar would just go under it and pee on the fleece below anyway so they're a bit hopeless but hopefully Snoopy and Ollie it might work for. So this is what it's looking like now and there's not too much left to do before I can put the pigs in. But these bottles is a da -da -da -da. Thanks for watching, don't forget to comment, rate and subscribe. Hop along to our Facebook page so you can keep up to date with what me and the pets are up to. See you soon! Thank you.